my sins would drive the nails in you that rugged cross is my cross too still every breath you drew was hallelujah and hallelujah 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 Good evening. Welcome to Christmas Eve service at Waypoint. We're so just happy you're here with us this evening. Glad to be here. It's just going to be a great next hour together, and we are so excited that you've uh, come into this place, and that we as a community, uh, with friends and family, are able to come into this place. And this is the tail end of our Advent series, in which we've been uh, kind of drawing from a deeper and older well in, in the sense of our call to worship and a couple of prayers and some things that we've been doing. We're pulling from the Book of Common Prayer. And so I'm going to invite you now as we come into this place just to stand with me, and we're going to say the call to worship together and then pray together. Sing to the Lord a new song. Sing to the Lord all the earth. Sing to the Lord. Praise his name. Proclaim his salvation day after day. Declare his glory among the nations, his marvelous deeds among all peoples. Come this night into our hearts, Lord Jesus. Let us pray. Let's say this together. Good and gracious God, on this holy night you gave us your Son, the Lord of the universe, wrapped in swaddling clothes, our Savior lying in a manger. Give us a place among the shepherds that we may find the one for whom we have waited, Jesus Christ. Help us to savor our Savior. Amen. Be seated. Can you sing this with me, church?
Tonight's first lessons are reading from the book of Isaiah. Isaiah 7, 14. Therefore the Lord himself will give you a sign. The virgin will be with child and will give your birth to a son and will call him Emmanuel. Isaiah 9, 6. For to us a child is born, to us a son is given, and the government will be on his shoulders, and he will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Isaiah 11, 1 through 3. A shoot will come up from the stump of Jesse. For from his roots a branch will bear fruit. The spirit of the Lord will rest on him, the spirit of wisdom and of understanding, the spirit of counsel and of power, the spirit of knowledge and of the fear of the Lord, and he will delight in the fear of the Lord. This is the word of God. Church, if you could stand with us. Rejoice, 
Tonight's second scripture lesson comes from Luke chapter 1, verses 26 through 38. In the sixth month, God sent the angel Gabriel to Nazareth, a town in Galilee, to a virgin pledged to be married to a man named Joseph, a descendant of David. The virgin's name was Mary. The angel went to her and said, Greetings, you who are highly favored, the Lord is with you. Mary was greatly troubled at his words and wondered what kind of greeting this might be. But the angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary. You have found favor with God. You will be with child and give birth to a son, and you are to give him the name Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High. The Lord God will give him the throne of his father David, and he will reign over the house of Jacob forever. His kingdom will never end. How will this be, Mary, asked the angel, since I am a virgin? The angel answered, The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. So the Holy One to be born will be called the Son of God. Even Elizabeth, your relative, is going to have a child in her old age, and she who is said to be barren is in her sixth month. For nothing is impossible with God. I am the Lord's servant, Mary answered. May it be to me as you have said. Then the angel left her. This is the word of God. We are the Cooper Sims family. I am Jenny Cooper, and this is our modern blended family. <laughs> uh, my husband, Mark Cooper, my mother-in-law, Rose Cooper, Harrison and Barlow are my stepchildren and the wonderful children of Mark and Stephanie Sims. Stephanie is married to Richard Sims and stepmom to Maddie and Catherine, um, Richard's beautiful daughters and I like to call them my own as well. 
And the next reading comes from Luke chapter 2, verse 1 through 7. In those days, a decree went out from Caesar Augustus that all the world should be registered. This was the first registration of Canarius, the governor of Syria. All went to be registered, each to his own town. And Joseph also went up from Galilee, from the town of Nazareth to Judea, to the city of David, which is called Bethlehem, because he was the house and lineage of David, to be registered with Mary, his betrothed, who was with child. And while they were there, the time came for her to give birth. And she gave birth to her firstborn son, and wrapped him in swaddling cloths, laid him in a manger, because there was no room for them in the inn. This is the word of God. Hi, everyone. I'm happy to see all my big family here, <laughs> an extended family, and I'm very happy to see all of you on this Christmas Eve. I want to share a story. Um, it's actually a love story that happened um, that Mark and I witnessed um, a couple of weeks ago. My brother, Neil, who lives in South Georgia, became quite ill and one of the family members stepped up and said, I'm taking him in my home and I'm going to take care of him and love him. And that's the love story. This entire family from an eight, nine-year-old children helped take care of their pa, they called him. So as the time went on, um, I received a phone call uh, from my niece, is who this is, and she said, I know you wanted to come. You told me that on the phone. I had passed that along to my kind son, Mark, and he had said, I will drive you there. It's a seven-hour trip one way, and um, so anyway, after she said that he... Um, had made a turn for the worse. Then I called Mark at work and I said, I'd like to go Friday. And so without any hesitation, he said, let's go. So Friday at 5 a.m., we left Charlotte. We made that long trek of seven hours. Then as we arrived at her home, which is a beautiful country home, out in the pines, um, very peaceful. We um, arrive, and just as we arrive, her father, my niece, is a Baptist minister, preacher, we call him in Georgia, Baptist preacher. And so he arrived just at the same time as we did. I, I give a few of these details just so you understand the timing of God's work. Um, after we arrived, we visited a little, and then I said, I want to go see my brother. So my niece had passed on to me that he had not been coherent or um, responsive for several days, and she had not told him that I was coming. So. I, we, we all filed in. There ended up being six of us around his deathbed. And it was an older, uh, an older son that was there that had helped take care of him, but had gotten up every morning and helped shower, bathing, get him taken care of before he went to work. And then, of course, my niece and the rest of the family, as I said, helped to take care of him. But we went into his bedroom that looked out through the trees onto a beautiful lake, so he had a very peaceful place to rest. And as we filed around the bed, I wanted to be sure that I was right in front of him. And as I looked at him, his eyes were closed, there was, his arms were over his chest, and he was breathing rather erratically, but, but uh, was very peaceful. And I just said, hi, Neil. 
and he says, hello, Rosie. And everybody was shocked. He hadn't said a word in days. So that to me was joy in my heart. So I wanted to tell you this story because I feel like it fits in so much with our Advent uh, candle in that it's about love, joy, hope, peace, and certainly Christ. So after that happened, we just stood around the bed for a minute. Everybody was so shocked. And then we began to talk with, about him and about my life with him and everything. And then Sonia asked her dad, being the Baptist preacher, if he would pray over Neil, and he said, of course. Now, it's all happenstance that he's there with us at this moment. And um, not happenstance, it's God's plan, I should say. But um, he gave the sweetest peace prayer. He prayed for Neil that he would soon be in heaven because he was a God-loving man, very much a believer in Jesus Christ. And um, he said, you will be in peace before long. Then he prayed for the rest of us standing around. And he asked that God give us strength and peace as we went along. And I felt peace in some ways because I knew I would see him again. <laughs> and then after that, we all could feel the Holy Spirit fill that room. It was quite a remarkable love story event, what God can, and Jesus Christ, can do for souls and hearts. Um, after this, um, we all went back into her living room to visit a little bit, and when I went back in to see my brother alone, I told him some stories about us. I tried to engage him again, but there was nothing there, so. But as time went on, um, we got to visit in this home, and um, I was gonna let Mark tell this story if he wanted to, but he told me when we started on our return trip, Mark said, when I walked into that house, I felt the love in it. Think about that. Our homes tell whether we love each other and where there's love in there from the Lord Jesus Christ. Um, we left um, that family and feeling, feeling wonderful about the care and the love that was shared there. And we turned around, made the seven hour trip back through the fog and God was with us the whole way. The next day was Saturday, and I got up just knowing that that was the day um, that the Lord would take my brother. And um, I tried to cook. I burned everything I cooked. <laughs> and, um, but finally, about 2, 2.30 in the afternoon, my niece called me, and he had passed at about the time that we had gone the day before. And it was just all, I just know it was all the timing of the Lord that helped this event, this wonderful, wonderful memory, and just a wonderful love, hope, peace, um, joy, Christ story uh, that that we witnessed that day. Thank you. Today we light the final candle, the Christ candle. As we gather, as we, 
as we gather to remember then in a faraway manger in a faraway time, the birth of Christ brings a spark of hope in the dark area of our lives. Will you all pray with me, please? Heavenly Father, we offer this humble prayer on Christmas Day. We come to you with thanks in our hearts. Today we pray for joy in our hearts, hope in our God, love to forgive, and peace upon this earth. As we, as we remember the birth of Jesus, we ask you to let kindness come with every gift and deliver us from evil by the blessings Christ brings and teach us to be merry with cheer and clear hearts. May we remember with thankful hearts that love comes with each present that we open. We also thank you for the love you have for each of us, and we thank you for the many gifts that you give us, especially the gift of life itself. Thank you, God, for sending your son on one glorious night to live a perfect life and die on the cross for our sins. Thank you that Jesus rose from the dead three days later and that this Christmas and every Christmas, we can celebrate the gift of eternal life through Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Y'all, if you have not looked out the window, my goodness, what a gift on a Christmas Eve to see a sunset like that. It's pretty incredible. Thank you, Lord. Uh, tonight, we're going to do something we haven't done in uh, a year and a half, probably, is, and that's past the offering. Uh, we, we just kind of left it outside. But tonight, 100% of what we, it's our tradition at Waypoint that on Christmas Eve, we give to a local ministry. Okay, so tonight, 100% of what we give will go to West Charlotte Urban Young Life. And I don't know if you know that ministry, Mike Slaughter uh, and Hector before him, an incredible ministry on, on the, just in Charlotte that's going on at West Charlotte. And so I just want to invite you to just pray as you feel led and, and know that 100% of what we do tonight will go to uh, West Charlotte Young Life. So with that in mind, just invite you to listen to some music and uh, just uh, as we pass the plate by, if you would just consider uh, giving to that ministry, that'd be great. Thank you.
But uh, you guys could bow your heads. And, uh, Lord, thank you so much that you, uh, that you, you call us to something uh, so special um, that uh, we, we know the whole story. We know the narrative of that it didn't just start with you as a baby, but to get to experience uh, you as a baby, I can only imagine, Lord, what it was like uh, to hold the, the Lord of the universe and still need to feed and change diapers. And man, it's, it's just amazing. So we, we get this opportunity to, to give um, to give back, um, to, to pour out ourselves. Uh, so Lord, um, take this, this offering um, and use it, use it for your kingdom work uh, here on earth. Um, just multiply it. We love you, Lord, and we, we give you our, our offerings, we give you our lives. Um, it's your holy name. Amen. You guys could stand with us. We were trying to be sensitive so you didn't feel like you were standing up and sitting down and standing up and sitting down. So anyway. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. My name's Tim Gershio, and I just have two quick things. One, uh, I was born in Mongolia, moved to America when I was six, and I have the wonderful privilege to call the Gershios my family. Second, um, I get to decorate people's houses as a hobby for Christmas for fun, and uh, it's really amazing, or I guess wonderful, that I get to sometimes be the first decoration that somebody sees in their life or their last. And I guess that just comes to say, we never know when it's our time to be called to God, uh, to heaven. So cherish your family, cherish the moments. Thank you. Tonight's final lesson from Luke 2, chapter 2, 8 through 20. And there were shepherds living out in the fields nearby, keeping watch over their flocks at night. An angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them. 
and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, do not be afraid. I bring you good news, a great joy that will be for all the people. Today in the town of David, a savior has been born for you. He is Christ the Lord. This will be a sign of, to you. You will find a baby wrapped in cloths and lying in a manger. Suddenly, a great company of the heavenly host appeared with the angel, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to man, on whom his favor rests. When the angels had left, left them, gone into heaven, the shepherds said to, one, said to one another, Let's go to Bethlehem and see these things that has happened, which the Lord has told us about. So they hurried off and found Mary and Joseph and the baby who was lying in the manger. When they had seen him, they spread the word concerning, they spread the word concerning what they had been told them about this child. And all who heard it was amazed at what the shepherds said to them. But Mary treasured up all these things and pondered him, them in her heart. The shepherds returned glorifying and praising God for all the things they had heard and seen, which were just as they had been told. This is the word of God. Okay, almost the last time I'm going to have you stand up. to pre-warn you there's a there's a chorus that we added in the song if you've been watching the movie the the chosen or the show the chosen it's going to be that version but until then you're safe are the herald angels
song of the King, singing glory to God and to peace on the earth, singing how now the song of the King, singing how now the song of the King. Amen. You may be seated. Well, good evening, people of Waypoint. What a, what a, just a beautiful chance to get together. I mean, just to be here. That whatever you've got planned the rest of the night, whatever you've got planned for the morning, I would just invite you to be present in this moment. Because for whatever reason you find yourself in this chapel, in this sanctuary, Maybe you're a Waypoint regular and this is your home and so you are hungry to just come and to worship on Christmas Eve together. Maybe you're in visiting family and you wanted to be a part of this. Maybe you're here because your parents drug you to be here. Maybe you're here because you're eager to go to your grandparents to open up some gifts. Whatever brings you into this space, I trust that God has you here for a reason. E even for me to hear the scripture lessons and uh, what God's word was saying, I don't know if you caught, two things that stuck out to me was how terrified Mary was and the shepherds. It said that they were terrified this night. And then as Tim read that, what caught my heart was they left their encounter with Jesus Christ glorifying God. And so I pray whatever brings you into this space, if it's filled with fear, whatever may have brought you here, God, I, I pray you would hear, leave here with great joy. We didn't sing, but that song, Oh Holy Night, there's that line in there that says, Oh, the weary world rejoices. And I don't know about you, but I've been weary this year. Maybe it's just been a long year. Things haven't always gone as I've expected or planned or hoped them to. Maybe it's because I electrocuted myself about two or three weeks ago trying to put in a light switch. But I, as Tim said, just have come to appreciate this moment. And so that's my prayer for you this night, to just be present for a moment, to maybe catch a glimmer of what Jesus Christ wants to do and say and be present for you. So with that in mind, let me just pray. Merciful God, I ask that you would bring clarity to my word, that nothing I say would distract from us just being able to see you this night. For Lord Jesus, this is the night that you broke in to the hurt of our world, to bring us hope. So we pray all this in your son's name. Amen. So if you've been with us this Advent season, we've been building up this Christmas tree each week, talking about the parts of the tree. And the first week we talked about how the base, how important it is to have a good base, a good firm foundation, the roots of our faith. And then the next week we talked about the importance of the trunk, the tree of life, how Jesus Christ was crucified on the cross, that tree for us, to give us life. And like a trunk, Jesus' love for us nourishes everything we need. And then the next week we talked about the branches and how we're like the branches to reach out with that hope to the hurting world around us. And last week Chip talked about the fruit, how the fruit of our faith is what God is after, that our faith would be fruitful and would multiply. And so we come here tonight with one more thing. Kids, when y'all look at this tree, what, what, what's missing, do you think? A star, a star, and what does a star help bring? You ready? Drum roll, please. Light. I don't know if you're like me as you've driven around the city of Charlotte and you've noticed how many more people put those lights out and decorations of light out in the middle of the night. Tim, I like that you read the last reading because I totally didn't mean to put you up there as Tim is somebody who goes and strings lights on people's homes. Think about what light does to the darkness. Light breaks through the darkness. That's what we gather this night to proclaim, that on the darkest of nights, and this small little town of Bethlehem to this peasant woman and this working class father in a manger is the smallest of lights breaks in our greatest hope. 
and the darkest of moments, we're celebrating that Jesus, the Son of God, broke through. When Mark was reading the scripture, did you notice just a small little line that said, and she gave birth to a son? That's the entire description of the God of the universe coming into this world. It's the smallest little lights into the darkest of nights. That's why we gather in this space tonight. And I pray you don't miss it. Don't get caught up in all the stuff going on, moving from party to party, from place to place, from gift to gift, and just get drawn into all the hecticness, all the frenzy of this holidays, that you miss that light. The miss the moment that Jesus Christ came into the world for you. That you could pause in the midst of this weary world, in the midst of this busy moment, and not get drawn in to all the activities, all the movement. Just maybe grab a moment for yourself. Because maybe, maybe your tomorrow morning is going to be like this family's. <laughs> Just even watching that brought anxiety to me. <laughs> that we can get going so fast, so fast, so fast, moving and moving and moving, that we fail to savor the Savior. To just stop and pause somewhere tonight. That's my challenge for you. Somewhere, grab five minutes, grab 10 minutes, 15 minutes, and just savor what God has done in your life. Savor the Savior. Well, what does it mean to, to savor? Think about when you have a good meal, how you savor that bite. That you just taste. So the psalmist says it well. He says, taste and see that the Lord is good. Where have you experienced the goodness of God? Maybe it's just a small little bite. But is there somewhere you could just taste and see the goodness of God? To savor also means to kind of breathe in. We get so busy, so going, so moving, that oftentimes we forget to breathe. And just simply in the act of breathing, we're inviting God into our hearts. You look at how Genesis starts, it talks about how over the darkness, over the void that God spoke, let there be light, and all of a sudden creation began, and then God formed Adam out of the mud, and then he breathed life into him. That every breath we take is where we breathe in the Holy Spirit and take a pause. And last, as we savor the Savior, we just appreciate what God has done. As Psalm 46 says, be still and know that I am God. For our hearts, our hearts are restless until they find rest in God. So how, how can you find rest in that little light that's breaking into the darkness? Because strangely, as you savor the Savior, what you discover is everything is as it's supposed to be. That claim right there, that is a bold claim we make this night. That everything is as it's supposed to be. Can you make that statement at some moment over your life that even though things might be hard right now, even though this might be the first Christmas you're celebrating without a, a loved one, that there'll be an empty chair around the table. Even though you might experience the darkest of nights out there, can you at least just claim in this moment right now, everything is as it's supposed to be, for God is with me. Rose, you testified beautifully to that, with being able to be in the room with Neil and the hardship of watching your brother pass. And being able to say, even in that moment, this is as it's supposed to be, for the peace of God will transcend. That's what we claim this night. We claim this night that no matter what we face out there, no matter if we're going home to an empty home to be by ourselves, no matter if we're going home to experience and be reminded of the loss of that loved one, no matter if we're going home into a frantic home where there's more alcohol and arguing than joy and peace, no matter where we go from this place, what we're claiming is that everything is supposed to be 
because we worship Jesus Christ. And as Lane said at the very beginning, we worship Emmanuel, God with us. God with us is the name given to Jesus. That was his nickname to remind us that he is God with us. He's not God above us, watching over us, judging us. He's not God in us, being whoever we want him to be, but he is God with us. That no matter where we go from here, whatever we face out there this night, whatever we face into the new year, we worship a God who chose to be with us, chose to walk alongside us in the hardship, in the pain, in the darkest moments, he comes to bring a light. Like a little single candle light, he is able to illuminate the darkest of moments. That's what we worship this evening. We gather to proclaim that hope, that everything is as it's supposed to be, for we have a God who is with us, that Jesus Christ broke into this world to come and to find us wherever we are, to show us how much he loved us, that he was willing to walk alongside us, to go to the cross for us, to take upon himself all of the hurt, all of the pain, and to cry out on that cross, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? In that moment, he is making that cry for you, for the pain you feel, for the hurt, for the wonder, for the lonely, for the scared, for the fear that you might be able to know that you have a God who loves you and will be with you no matter what. And so we wrap our Waypoint services with, on Christmas Eve with one of my favorite traditions, where we distribute the light of Christ, where we take from this one single candle, we're going to pass this light from me to the elders to you, just as the love of Christ moves. And what I would invite you to do is you take your candle and you light it off of the person next to you. Notice how you move from darkness to light. Notice how that small flame is able to keep moving. I always say if we were to pass water or food, we would kind of run out very quickly. But what's amazing about the light is that from one person to the next, it's able to radiate out and to keep on going and to glow, because that's the love of God. John tells us that in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. That the worship, we, that is a creation, the Christmas story of Jesus in John's Gospel. That the Word became flesh. That He became the light of the world to bring hope into our dark world. So friends, as we prepare, we will sing Silent Night, and as we pass these candles, I would invite you to consider how you can just savor the moment, can make that claim that everything is as it's supposed to be. Thanks be to God.
Friends, as you go into this night, know that God goes with you wherever you go. May you leave here not with fear and trembling, but with great joy in the Lord Jesus Christ. Thanks be to God. Amen. Amen. You all have a very Merry Christmas, and I look forward to seeing you all Sunday morning. Amen.